is a land that is fairer than Welcome to Lovers of Jesus Ministries International. The message you are about to hear is from the Lord's anointed Dr. Edward Irobi, the man with the mandate to proclaim the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and to raise an army for the Lord in this end time. To our Bible study today, I'm so excited to have all of you that have come across our way today to hear the word of the Lord. As I always tell you, I am excited each new Sunday because the Lord has each new Sunday interesting things to give to us. So I want to be the first recipient and I want you also to receive from the Lord. I know you are excited also to be blessed by the Lord. Today, before we pray, I just want to give you a, a, an information, you know, where we are heading to, you know, we are going to um, start a small uh, um, sub-sub-series uh, that is known as a deliverance from idols that has to do with physical deliverance from idols. I will give you more information after the prayer. Shall we pray? Eternal Heavenly Father, we welcome your presence. We thank you for bringing us to the banqueting hall of the Lord to dine in your presence. Father, we are hungry. Please feed us through your word. Your word is truth. And Lord, let our lives be transformed 
Behold, my brothers and sisters that have logged in from different countries, from different states, from different cities to hear your word. Spirit of the Lord, speak through me and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ that after this meeting, the name of the Lord Jesus will be exalted and your people will be blessed in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, I just thought of giving us a recap in case some of you that may not have been here following this series for a long time, I want to give you just a little synopsis. You, you know, since the month of January, we have been examining the big topic that says consecration of the body. And uh, the consecration of the body as I presented to us in January, is under the return of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And we have another subtopic known as consecration of the soul. And we have another one known as consecration of the spirit. So we divided the message of consecration into three into three in the sense that each quarter we have decided to examine each component of consecration discussion like um the first quarter of the year we started with consecration of the body Second quarter, we shall delve into consecration of the soul, as I said, and then the third quarter, consecration of the spirit. So, and on that consecration of the body, we have examined several sub-subtopics, and this is almost towards the end of consecration of the body. Remember that the Lord has a particular goal he wants to achieve by teaching us consecrated life as his children. What his goal is that he wants us to be ready for his soon return. That's why the big caption is the return of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. When we walk in the life of consecration, both our bodies, our souls, our spirit, everything will be in that ready pattern. God wants it to be pleasing unto the Lord. Now the Lord is saying, my children, you will now be in the situation that I can use you to bless other people. Because yes, the Lord Jesus is coming to rapture the church, the children of God to heaven. The Lord is not happy that many of our brothers and sisters have not known him. Our friends, our neighbors, many of them are wallowing in ignorance. People are dying every day without knowledge of God. And that's why the Lord said, I want to make you my, my body. I want to make you my children. I want to make you my church instrument I'm going to use. And for you to be a ready instrument for God to pass through. He wants you to live a consecrated life. And another word for consecration is holiness. A holy vessel. Another word for holiness or consecration is what? Sanctified vessel. Sanctified child of God. You know, because some people may be saying, oh, brother, what is it possible that somebody will live holy in this world? Yeah. If it's not possible, the Lord Jesus would not have uh, informed us in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. So it means that perfection is possible on the planet earth. But it's not something that anybody can accomplish by his or her power. It's something that each new moment, each new day, we rely on the Holy Spirit of the Lord to make us what the Lord wants us to be. And one of the processes that the Spirit of God uses is the process of consecration, helping us to consecrate our lives, 
unto the Lord, helping us to appreciate that we are separated. That's another word, separated unto God. We don't have to conform to the rudiments of the worldly system. Mm -hmm. We don't have to compromise, just like we see things happening on the surface of the earth. We have to know that the Lord expects higher responsibility from us as his children. And the only way the Lord wants to accomplish that is to walk in us by the power of his spirit as we yield ourselves. Because, yes, the Lord can tell you, this is what I want to do in you. But he wants you to be submissive because the life of consecration is hard. It's very hard. If you talk about consecration of the body as you are going to see Today, deliverance uh, from idols, you know, the physical deliverance from idols. You discover that it's not easy. You understand? But what makes it doable is the enablement of the Holy Spirit. When we say, eternal spirit of the Lord, please help me. It is heard. And now the Lord brings it to your understanding that for with man, it seems impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. So, beloved, that's what we have been exploring since January. And last week, we examined deliverance from idol, part two, where we wrapped up in spiritual deliverance. So today, by God's grace, we shall examine deliverance from idols, part three. And this part three is going to focus mainly on physical deliverance. Why am I tagging it physical deliverance? Because after the Lord must have worked in us spiritually, inside of us, on our bodies that are his temples, right? The Bible says we are the temples of the spirit of the Lord. You know, and now by the enablement of his spirit, He's accomplishing some things you will, you may not see with your eyes because these are spiritual work, spiritual activities the Spirit of God accomplishes in us. Now the Lord is saying, hey son, hey daughter, there is the physical component which I want you now to do. Mm -hmm. Because if you fail to actualize the physical component deliverance will be incomplete i want you to think about that if you say oh i have confessed my sins the lord has convicted me spiritually i know that the spirit of the lord is working in me helping me to get rid of all these idols all the things that i do that have contaminated my body as a child of God. All the things that have contaminated my eyes, all the things that have contaminated my hearing, all the things that may have contaminated even my speech because of the profanity that must have come out of my mouth, because of the worldly music that I must have been giving heed to, because of the things my eyes have seen and I lusted after them, because of the things I put on my body, that God say, hey, servant, you don't have to dress like this, and so on and so forth. Now the Lord is saying, I want you to go further on the physical side of it. Some of you may say, why? Because our enemy is trying to lay grip on something. He wants to hold on to something to use it against us. And that is known as his properties. <laughs> you know, just like when, when somebody, let me say, somebody, yeah, somebody has stolen something. Let, let's use that word. Somebody stole something. And now the person is still saying, no, oh, I don't think I have any of these things in my custody. But the owner of the property will, see, will say, but I see my stuff, you know, with you. You say, but I, I don't see it as your stuff because I purchased it with my money. 
But the person will say, but my mark is there. No matter you purchase it uh, with your money, it was my brain that uh, created it. My ingenuity created that particular item. So that item is mine, no matter you bought it. Mm -hmm. So this is where we talk about physical deliverance. We will see some aspect of the Bible. You know, passages in the Bible where the Lord is still calling us onto that separation. That for the body to be completely consecrated unto the Lord. Yes, you are, you, your body has witnessed the spiritual touch of God's power. The Lord is, just, is still saying, I want you to be physically separated from that idol. I want you to be physically separated from that material so that the enemy will not have anything to lay claim. Very, very important. Very, very important. I want us to check the word of the Lord in the book of um, Luke chapter 4. I want us to start by um, examining the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, after this um, information, we shall go to um, another pre-information before I go to the first point of our discussion today, and then the second point, and then we wrap up. Um, I want to let you know ahead of time that I have to... Um, topics we have to examine today and that top uh, the, the first topic is what acknowledgement and identification of the idol on the altar if somebody wants to break free physically then after that acknowledgement and identification of the idol on the altar i have another subtopic we shall examine and that one is um, total obedience and not partial obedience is needed. So you have identified it. Now the Lord is saying total obedience is needed. So we have to see how these things affect consecration of the body and physical deliverance to be achieved. So I want us to um, take into cognizance something right now. The devil does not force you to take his gift. That's what I want to share with you right now in respect to the temptation the Lord Jesus had in the book of uh, Luke, uh, St. Luke's, uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 4. We are going to see that the devil does not force you to take his gifts of vanity. Any type of vanity. He does not force human beings. You must force him out to be free from his grip. Remember, we are talking about physical deliverance. So, the first point. You are a child of God. And you have seen yourself being tempted by the devil. Using vanity products. Now... It's left up to you whether to succumb or not to succumb. That's why I want us to explore this, that the devil does not force you to take his gifts of vanity. However, you must force him out to be free from his grip. If you succumb to accepting the vanity product of the devil, it takes more energy to get rid of them. But it does not take much to accept them. You understand? So this is one of the truths about deliverance I want to bring to our attention. There is physical aspect of it. We cannot just say, no, I, I confess my sins. And then the product of vanity that I have been using, I still keep on keeping them in my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll tell you. you. You cannot do like that. 
<laughs> you know, just like a, 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 an alcoholic, an alcoholic who received a guest and his guest being his former colleague somewhere. And now the, the former alcoholic who is now a believer in Christ, you know, receiving this guest who visited him with a bottle of scotch whiskey, thinking that, you know, he will be coming again to, sh to drink with his former friend. And say, oh, friend, I thought of uh, purchasing this scotch whiskey for you. I know you love it so much. You know, we used to drink how many years ago? Not knowing that this person is now a transformed believer. So the believer is going to be in the mood now to say, will I talk to my friend outrightly? Hey, friend, I have your gift. I'm sorry, I don't drink anymore. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Or will you just say, oh, let me just take this gift and keep it in my house. You know, so that when my friend goes, I can throw it away. Mm. You discover that immediately that alcoholic beverage bottle stays in your house. It becomes a radar in the spirit realm because the Lord does not want any of his children to drink strong drink. There is going to be a radar indicating something is wrong in the house. Something unwanted is in the house. As a child of God, whether you call it your earthly body or your physical home, Something is blinking red light that needs to be taken away. So which option are we going to take? Just politely to talk to our friend and say, hey, my colleague, my friend, thank you for being thoughtful. But unfortunately, I don't drink anymore. So I'm not going to accept it. So your friend can go with his wine and do whatever with it so that your home will be free from the physical idol. Keep it there. Let's see what happened in the temptation of the Lord Jesus. Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse number 1. Very fast. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit in, into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. In those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And uh, the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, the, uh, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up, into an high mountain, shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whosoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. So let's keep it there. Remember what I told you. The devil does not force you to take his gift of vanity. But it will be a tug of war, a struggle to pull out. That's why God is calling us every day. Be separated. Don't touch it. Because the deliverance process sometimes can be painful. Don't get close to vanity that will pull you away from relationship with the Lord. So, that's why the enemy presents his gifts to people. And nobody is going to say that the devil forced him to commit sin. To take anything that would defile him or her. 
Mm -mm. Nobody. The devil will tell you, which clothes did I wear when you accused me that I deceived you? The Bible said a man is tempted when he is what? Driven by his lust. Mm -hmm. The same lust of the eyes. The same lust of the flesh. That's why in our discussion some weeks ago, I informed us that all aspects of defilement, all aspects of bodily contamination, they are embedded in loss of the eyes, loss of the flesh, and pride of life. So that's why we need to be very, very careful. We will see some examples in the scriptures here. That's why the Bible is warning us about idols. Because all these things the devil is offering, all these vanity things, the enemy is using them to take away our time we're supposed to give to the Lord. That one hour we're supposed to give to the Lord, our eyes are on that soap opera on the television. Oh, and you are laughing. You, are you think you're having good time. But after watching that movie, Spend 15 minutes in prayer. You may not even pray up to 15 minutes and sleep will come. Why? Because you have forces fighting against you. Anytime you want to advance spiritually, those negative supernatural forces that are after vanities will try to pull you down. And that's why the Lord is calling the church onto the life of consecration. When we know that our eyes, our time, everything we do is supposed to be unto the Lord, our program time, we have to time it to make sure we don't spend unnecessary time there that we're supposed to give to, you know, to the Lord to such a, a, a programs and anything at all that will take the time we're supposed to give to the Lord. You know, the Lord is a jealous God, as I've been sharing with us. Just like a jealous woman, you don't want anybody to talk to, to your husband anyhow, you know. Every time you are going, I remember when I got married to my wife, you know. You know, that uh, um, early honeymoon uh, uh, days, you know, every time you are, you are holding your hands on the street and everything, you know. And if any guy looks one kind, you know, you begin to say, hey man, any problem? You understand? So the same thing, you, you think you are protective, you think you are jealous, you know. God is the most jealous person. And that's why he's warning his children, hey, don't have anything to do with vanity because they will contend with the knowledge of God in your life. That's where the Lord is taking us to. Another point I want to make here is in the book of Mark chapter, chapter 3, verse 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. So this is why we don't have to even touch any vanity product at all. Anything that will make us to be defiled because the enemy will not let go that, uh, 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 you know, he will not allow you to break free easily. You understand, as I said before, to absorb the things of the enemy is very easy, but to break free might be very, very challenging. But remember, the essence of this teaching is how we can break free physically. We discussed spiritual deliverance for two weeks. So this time around, we have to talk about physical deliverance two weeks. All right. So I want to read. Point number B, forcing him out most of the time will include physical disassociating yourself from any of his properties or instrument that may predispose you to sinful behavior. This is one truth about deliverance. If we want to push the strong man out, we have to appreciate that we have to break free, get ourselves disassociated from any of the devil's properties or instruments 
that may predispose us to sinful behavior that the Lord hates. Example. Are you ready? Let me give you some live example from, from how many years uh, being in deliverance ministry. I, I, when I was um, in Nigeria, we were praying over a Christian brother who had some demonic mani manifestations, you know. So that beloved brother, something happened in his life. And then when we were praying, a, a, a demon, you know, started um, manifesting in the life of that uh, brother, unfortunately. And you could hear the voice of the demon speaking through the voice of this Christian brother. And uh, he started, uh, 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 the, the, the voice of the demon started um, uttering this kind of statement. He is mine. I want to take him to the river. I want to take him to the river. You just said, wait, 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 wait. How can, uh, why are you saying he is yours? You want to take him to the river? He, he is a believer. He is a child of God. You see, the preacher discussing with evil spirit concerning the brother who does not know what he was doing because under the anointing of the Holy Spirit as we were praying for this my brother the demon operating in his life started manifesting and started speaking all this I want you to hear clearly and the demon said I will not leave him I will not leave him you want me to go I will not leave him. We say, okay, okay. If you don't want to leave him, why, why is it that you don't want to leave, leave him? He's a child of God. And the demon said, because he is holding my property. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? So you cannot be holding anything that belongs to the enemy. Call it any artificial product that the Lord said don't do. You know, call it any lifestyle you are living before that God said you have to break free from. And you think, oh, the Lord understands. I still, I can be holding on to all this and be going to church. And we ask the, lady, the demon, you know, what is the product or what is the property of yours that this brother is holding? And now the demon say. He is holding my cloth. In Africa, we call it wrapper. Ladies' cloth, wrapping cloth. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, we stop the prayer because you cannot further. You cannot go further. This demon has a very big stronghold. So we need to deal physically. That's what I want to bring onto our understanding. We have to let this brother cut off anything with that demon. So we say, brother, the prayer is over. Open your eyes. Come back to normal uh, uh, physical realm. I want to ask you a question. Do you have any rapper, any lady clothes given to you by any woman? Because he was not married that time. I want you to hear. And then he said, oh, brother, you know, uh, when we were, you know, in school, as you know, primary school, secondary school, there happened to be this, this girl that gave me loin, African loin clothes. Oh. And uh, she was uh, saying, if I have to marry her or something like that. So she gave me that as a gift. I said, oh, okay. And little did he know that that was a covenant between him, spiritual covenant between him and entity of darkness. That that lady was, you know, in water uh, 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 spirit realm, you know, and uh, had already initiated this brother because of that. Uh, uh, um, a, a, a loin cloth that um, she gave to him and that's why when we were about praying for the brother the brother went into spiritual mani manifestation so what am i saying until the brother we told the brother okay 
that where, where is that particular loin cloth in your village? You have to go to your village. You got to get it and we have to burn it. When you destroy that, yes, the Lord Jesus has forgiven you. You've confessed your sins. You are a born again. But that physical attachment with the demonic entities has to be severed. That's the message I want to give to us. That's the message the Lord wants to give to us. If, for instance, you know, I have been sharing this thing, you know, passionately with all of us. We are children of God. This message is not for people that have not known the Lord. This message is for people that wants to go to heaven, that know what sin is all about. You know, if we know we are having anything that has to do with the enemy, we have to throw them away. For instance, there are many believers, before they gave their life to Christ, they were listening to rock music, blues. Mm -hmm. Why will you keep the CD of blues? How will you keep the CD of blues in your house? You, 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 it will not work. You have to take away the CDs of rock music and blues. Do you know that rock music is inspired? It's inspired by demonic entities. So, so far you keep the rock music CDs and all those blues in your house. You are welcoming the presence of demons. That's the physical deliverance. God wants us to appreciate today. You say you are a believer. Look at your nails. You are putting artificial, artificial nails. And those artificial nails, they are not your natural nails. As I continue to say, these artificial nails, they are not manufactured in this world. These are product of marine demons. And when you have it, the devil can claim the property. Say, I'm not leaving your body. Because you are holding my property. This is one of the physical things the Lord wants us to take into cognizance. You put eyelashes. And remember, when you have these eyelashes, you are saying, oh, this, this does not, in short, God, I don't like the way you gave me my eyelashes. My eyelashes ain't so good. And the devil is saying, oh, God, you see, your daughter does not appreciate your creation. He does not appreciate what you have created. And now the devil is saying, so far you are putting on these eyelashes, I will remain in you. I will be part of your life. And some people will be praying, Lord, help me. But they don't know that they are having the physical properties of the devil. God wants them to break away from all those things. Uh, with all humility, I've been saying that this happened to be the message you will not hear from your local church pastor. Because until people's eyes are open to see what is happening in the spirit realm. You understand? Because the Lord has been saying, my people have to get rid of idols. I have mentioned unto us that why the enemy has been holding our brethren into captivity, into hostage, yes, is because the enemy will be telling them, you are not pretty until you put artificial eyelashes. You are not pretty until you paint your lips and your lips will be as reddish as any reddish something. And, but God says you are beautifully and wonderfully made. You are not pretty until you put on your jewelry that uh, nobody will even come uh, uh, to, uh, close to touch. You are not beautiful until you make your breads. And those breads, yes, they are not yours. You know, they are uh, 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 many of them they call Peruvian hair, uh, 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 um, all the Brazilian hair. These are not our natural hair God gave to us. We are telling the devil, oh, we appreciate your gift more than the natural beauty of the Lord. If anybody doubts this message, let that person go on his or her knees and pray to the Lord. I have said it so many times, man, don't dye your hair. Allow the gray hair like my own to remain. God has given you gray hair. It is good. Not every man has experienced gray hair before he died. You understand? So there are people that have been saying, oh Lord, I need gray hair. But now when some people have gray hair, they take dye. And to, to you know, I don't want people to think I am old. But they have forgotten that aging and dying, they are part of life. You know, these are some of the physical properties of the devil. 
Do you understand? So when we do all those things, the Lord is not going to be happy with us. Time will fail me to mention a lot of them to us. Do you understand? And even some believers, after being born again, they are, you know, they will be speaking, you know, causes, profanity. We don't have to go back to where the Lord brought us from. I pray that the Lord will give us understanding. Right now, I want to talk to us about this. The pathway to set somebody free physically. Remember what we discussed last time, that first of all, there are supposed to be that acknowledgement. Lord, I know I have given him, I have given heed to vanity. Lord, you, I have used lightning lotion. You know, this is for my, my dark-skinned um, sisters, brown-skinned sisters that wants to be lighted. Mm -hmm. And also some of my light-skinned sisters that want to tan their bodies. They go to tanning boots. I want to tan it a little bit. Why will you change what God has uh, created? God wants you to be light-skinned. Keep it that way. Brother, God wants you to be dark-skinned or ebony or brown. Keep it that way. Have you seen it? So that is very, very important. So in this pathway of deliverance, the Lord wants us to do what? Acknowledge and identify the idol on the body altar. Because our bodies are the altars of the Lord. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit of the Lord. You can see an example in the book of Judges. Gideon saw the need. Physically, he has to destroy his father's altar. Remember what the Lord has been saying. We are now the altar for sacrifice. So any physical idol on our body, God wants us to cut it off so that we will be consecrated unto the Lord, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. So if you check the word of the Lord in the book of Judges, you, you see um, the story of Gideon, Judges chapter 6. You know how Gideon, uh, um, you know, destroyed the father's uh, idols because the Amalekites, um, they, they, they used to come, the Midianites used to come to ravish their farms. Uh, during harvest, you know, because they sinned against the Lord, and the Lord gave them gave them over to the uh, um, to Midian, uh, to, to 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 the Midianites and to the Amalekites. And now Gideon came up with that desire, Lord, why all this? And now the Lord sent a prophet telling them, because Israel went after idols, Israel went after foreign gods. This is the problem. The church has gone into idolatry in America. The church has gone into idolatry in Africa. We have been worshipping physical things like money. We have been worshipping pastors. We have been worshipping even positions. We have been worshipping celebrities and whatever you may call it. We have left holiness. We have left purity. We have left the way of the Lord. Today, the Lord is saying, forget about all these things and then come back to the Lord. That's what Gideon did. Gideon has to destroy the altars. That's the physical deliverance we are talking about. Remember, the, the spiritual one has taken place already when the angel of the Lord spoke to Gideon. Now Gideon has to go through the uh, destruction of the groups, the destruction of the altars physically. That's what the Lord expects us to do. Josiah, if we check the word of the Lord in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 34, uh, 15 to 28, we will meet a king called King Josiah. I love this young man. At the age of eight, he started ruling Judah. And he destroyed all the groves, all the altars of Baal, all the Ashtaroth, everything. Because his father, Manasseh, Manasseh was an idolatrous king who later on came back to the Lord. But now Josiah did not want to harbor any idol because physically the Lord has said, I want you to destroy them so that 
they will not take my place. Mm -hmm. Because when these idols are on the land, the children of Israel will be going after them. They will allow their children to pass through the fire to, and they will sacrifice their children even to Moloch, a demonic entity. So the Lord is saying, for my people to be clean, I want them physically to be separated from this idol. That's what Josiah did. And that's what the Lord is calling the church to. I'm about to do something in your generation. But I want my people to be physically separated. Yes, I have forgiven you your sins. You are my child. But I don't want the devil to be laying claim over your soul because of the property of the devil you are, you are holding. Mm -hmm. Because of the property of the enemy you are holding. If we, we can see the story of Josiah in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 34, 15 to 28. Finally, before we pray, let's see the story of this man, King Saul. This thing takes us to the last part of this discussion today. Total obedience and not partial obedience is required. In dealing with idols on the altar, our bodies being the altar of sacrifice, in dealing with these idols to break free physically, the Lord is saying, I want total obedience and not partial obedience. If you check the message the Lord gave to King Saul through Samuel, the Lord told King Saul and said, hey Saul, I want you to go to the land of Amalek and utterly destroy Amalek. You know very well how that story went. Let's read the word of the Lord. First Samuel chapter 15. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy. That's the word. Don't leave anyone breathing. Kill the animals. Kill the human beings. The same thing the Lord is telling us today. All these idols on the altar, all these things that contaminate our souls, all these things that the devil is using to contaminate our bodies, God is saying, I want them to be removed. Cut them out. I need 100% obedience. Because if you allow a tiny portion of them, the enemy can lay hands on such and use it as a legal ground against you. This is where it touches our heart so much. We don't want the enemy to hold anything against us out of ignorance. Now let's see what Saul did. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telem, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a, to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Canaanites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites, and Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until they came to shore, that is over against Egypt. And he took Ahab. This is the problem. He did not utterly uh, destroy them. He took their king. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag, their king, and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all, the, and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused that they destroyed utterly. So, beloved, 
something happened here you know very well. Partial, disobedience, uh, partial obedience. He destroyed some and left some. And the Lord was not happy. This is the issue in respect to physical separation from idols. The Lord is saying, I want all of them to go. I want all those artificial products that don't glorify me. Take them away. Those so-called sexy clothes that when you wear them, they will wrap on your bodies and men can lust after you. Mm -hmm. Even some men, they wear tight, sexy clothes too. And some of them will be going, they open their chest so that you see their hairs, the hairs on their chest and so on. These are vanities from the pit of hell. The Lord is saying he wants everything to be destroyed. And Saul spared. Don't spare anything. Ask the Lord for revelation. Every day continue to say, Lord, is there any idol in my body? Lord, expose it, O God. By your enablement, help me to get rid of them. Because if you leave them, just like Paul and Saul. Saul left the king and some fatlings and animals and, uh, and so on and so forth. You discover because of this, the Lord removed his kingdom from him. Because of idols, many people will go to hell. Unfortunately, many brothers in the church that are lifting hands, many sisters in the church lifting holy hands, they will not make it to heaven. I'm giving you the word of the Lord. That's why the Lord is calling us to consecration. He wants us to be separated, separated. So that when somebody sees you on the street, the person will see the glory of God. Mm -hmm. God is raising a peculiar people that will be raptured. The people that the enemy will not have any accusing finger against them. And that's why you are hearing this message because the Lord has marked you as an entity, marked you as a channel, marked you as a vessel. He wants to pass through and bless other people. And that's why you have the heart of reception. You have a receptive mind of the word of God. Now the Lord is saying, I am bringing this thing to your knowledge so that tomorrow you will share it with other people. Share this message of holiness. Share this message of breaking free from idol with other people of God. And I want to tell you, based on my experience, if you are sharing this, many people may not love you. They may not like you. <laughs> because it's very hard. You know, how can you tell a lady, oh, don't uh, make up, remove all these makeup products. And you, you understand? Mm -hmm. How can you tell a lady, don't put on wig? Mm -hmm. Because those are artificial things. God said, don't touch them because they are from the marine kingdom of darkness. The enemy can use them as instrument against you. And people will be praying, Lord, help me, help me. And the enemy will be saying, because of this product, you ain't going to have any victory. Paul uh, Saul had it tough. Let's read the word of the Lord. I'm all, that's where I'm going to end, all right? So that's where I'm going to end. Let's read uh, verse number verse number 11. It repented me that I have set you up. Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me. That's the word of the Lord to Samuel. And had not performed my commandments, and it grieved Samuel. And he cried unto the Lord all night. Samuel crying for Saul. Beloved, vanities can cut us out from the Lord. I pray that the Lord will deliver us. And when Samuel rose up to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel saying, Saul came to Camel, and behold, he set him up a place and is gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. He did not perform the commandment of the Lord. He did 
partial work. That's why the Lord is saying, my daughters, I love you. My sons, I love you. I know this may be very hard on your body. Depend upon the Holy Spirit to get rid. That's your favorite TV show. That soap opera TV that takes your time. It takes three hours. You don't want to miss it, but you cannot give God 30 minutes time in prayer. God is saying, break free. Break free from it. That music that reminds you sexual, whatever. Break free from it. Don't listen to that music. It will remind you of sexual erotic um, fantasies. Mm -hmm. Verse number 13. And Saul came, to, uh, um, verse number 14. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleating of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, I want you to mark this. After this, we have to pray because this is a very good place to conclude. And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites for the people. I want you to mark that. That is what is making a lot of ministers. They are going to give account before God. And some members of different churches and congregations will stand before God to give account how they deceived their ministers. But their ministers, God will hold them to a higher accountability because they listen to their church members. Instead of listening to the Holy Spirit, that's the message I want you to listen today. You are a child of God. Be careful what speaks to you. Be careful what you listen. Whatever you listen to. See, Saul listened to the people and disobeyed God. You may listen to your pastor. Your pastor will say, ah, forget that young preacher. No, you don't have to throw away your beauty products. You know, you don't have to look like a grandma. You know, because without these things, you may not look sexy and beautiful. You may not be appealing to your husband. You may not be appealing to your friends. Tell the devil, I will appeal to my God. I am beautifully and wonderfully made. I will appeal to my God. This is why the enemy constantly ha has kept a lot of us in, in bondages. Our pastors want to hear what people want them to, to preach. And our pastors, some of them will be telling people, you can drink a little alcohol. It doesn't matter. So far, you don't get drunk. God says, wine is a mocker. Stay away from alcoholic beverage. You are a priest. As a priest, you don't give in to alcohol. But some pastors say, just drink moderately. Immediately, you take it in. You are defiled. And you are having the property of the devil in your system, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost. For you to be completely free, you have to break from such a, a propensity or such a, 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 a fleshly engrandizement. That's what happened to Saul here. For the people spend the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. Just imagine. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. And Samuel said, Saul, and Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thy own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? You will stand before God on the day of judgment. Your pastor will not be there. As a pastor hearing what this message, 
you will stand before God. Your members will not be there. So you cannot tell the Lord, oh, I listened to my members. I wanted to keep them on the church pews because if I preach the gospel of holiness, they will leave the church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, I thank God for people that are in this ministry, you know, that have been interested on the narrow path. They want to be on that narrow path, no matter how painful it is. This is what the Lord is calling us onto. Behold, I am coming soon. I want my people to get ready, no matter how painful that journey to the kingdom of heaven is all about. Behold, Saul, Saul lost it. The Lord is saying it repented him. Verse number 20. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. He did not. And have gone the way which the Lord sent me. And have brought Agag, the king of Amalekite, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. The Lord is not interested in that sacrifice. That's why some people will say, oh, I'm looking good so that I will come to the sanctuary and praise God. God said, no, 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 no. no. That's not the type of looking good I want. I am looking after your heart. Your heart is where I'm looking after. Even some of the art artwork uh, adornments you are using, I don't want them. I want you to know you are separated. Finally, see what happened. We have two more verses before we pray. 23 and 24. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and, and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. The Lord side attracted him. 24. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. That ends the word of the Lord. He feared the people and obeyed their voice. Will you fear people? and dress anyhow? Will you obey the voice of people? You People that are giving you compliments and uh, you refuse the voice of the Lord? The Lord is calling us unto purity, unto sanctification, unto holiness. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will use these words to encourage you. The Lord wants us physically to severe anything that has to do with idols on the body. Shall we pray? Eternal Heavenly Father, we hallow you and then we love you so much. Thank you for blessing our heart through these words. Lord, these are tough words. My God, with man, we cannot, with man, it seems impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Father, with our power, we cannot make it. We cannot break free. We need your power. We need your grace. We need your enablement. We need your touch, oh God, to set us free from all these idols that the enemy has been using against us. Today we confess. We say, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Give us the enablement to physically throw away all those idols that distract us. We thank you. We trust your spirit that you are going to do exceedingly and prove our request according to your power that works in us. For in Jesus' mighty holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, thank you for the time you have spent to hang around here with us. I love you so much. I want to say thank you. Next week, we shall continue in what I call physical deliverance from idols part two. We shall look into what I call total demolition and removal of the idol on the altar of worship. More will be coming next week. See you next week, Sunday. God bless you.
We believe you have been blessed by this message. Please join us every Friday for our regular prayer meeting and on Sunday for our Bible study. You can also follow us on Facebook at Lovers of Jesus Ministries Connection. For prayers and answer, please call plus one four seven zero five four zero one seven eight four. You can also visit us on our website www.lgmi.net. Remain blessed. Jesus is coming soon. Not a sigh for the blessing of rest In the sweet by and by We shall meet on the beautiful shore Oh, oh, oh.